Thank you, Stephen. Um, there's 10 minutes more selling from me between you and the coffee. But I do want to talk for a few minutes about the UK infrastructure opportunity. Many of you here are already suppliers, operators, or investors in UK infrastructure. And I know that others of you are looking at opportunities here. So I want to explain why UK infrastructure is indeed the right strategic choice. And to do that, I just want you to go away remembering five dates. 1896, 1908, 1948, 2012, and 2052. Um, you will have spotted the topical connection uh, between at least four of these dates. But what do these years say about investment in UK infrastructure? 1896 stands for innovation. 1908, security and reliability. 1948, the need for infrastructure renewal. 2012, commitment to delivery. And 2052, a vision for the future. Five Olympic dates which make a compelling case for UK infrastructure. And let me explain. 1896 was the year of the first modern Olympics, the year in which Glasgow built the third underground system after London had pioneered underground railways 30 years earlier. 1896 was the year in, in which the Welshman, William Preece, first introduced Marconi's wireless telegraph to the general public. And 1896 was the year in which an Englishman, Walter Arnold, received the world's first ever speeding fine. Um, and he drove at a terrifying four times the speed limit. Yes, uh, he drove at eight miles an hour. Um, so today, it's not wireless tele telegraphy, but it's super fast broadband. It's a new national supercomputing network. It's not underground railways, but underground carbon storage. So innovation in UK infrastructure in 1896, innovation in UK infrastructure in 2012. In 1908, the Olympic Games came to London for the first time. But the UK was a very different place in 1908 to today. Sweeping reforms to welfare, high-profile political protests, and the Liberal Party looking to reform the House of Lords. So, not at all like the UK today. Um, but in 1908, London had the finest and most comprehensive sewerage system in the world. 21,000 kilometers of tunnels that could comfortably serve up to four million people over double the population of the city that was then the largest in the world. And more than 100 years later, that same network is still the backbone of London's water system. And it is still delivering a return for investors in Thames Water 100 years on. Investors like the CIC, whose investment in Thames Water is their first significant European venture, and the Abu Dhabi Investment Authority, who I'm pleased to see here today. When we build infrastructure in the UK, we build it well, we build it to last, and critically, with investors supported by one of the strongest regulatory and legal systems in the world. When you invest in the UK, you know your money is protected for the long term and that your return is reliable. The regulatory regime in water, for example, that governs the investment we've recently seen from ADIA and CIC is rated AAA by the credit rating agencies. So that is the message of 1908. The UK was and is the safe long-term home for infrastructure investment. And so on to 1948 and London's second Olympic Games. London stepping in at the 11th hour after a 12-year gap in the Games. In 1948, the tough economic climate at the time dominated the headlines with the Games nicknamed the Austerity Games. So again, 
nothing like today. But in 1948, a multi-billion rail investment program was underway, providing employment to ease the post-war slump, repairing and upgrading the rail system. A program which replaced the UK's fleet of steam trains with upgraded diesel and electric trains. And as we needed to modernize our transport and power systems then, so we need to modernize them now as demonstrated by the 9.4 billion pounds of rail upgrades we announced just last week, including significant investment in electrification and increasing capacity. On present plans, we will support almost 22 billion pounds of rail investment in the four years up to 2019. And on top of that, and almost beneath our feet, the tunneling has started on the 14.5 billion pound Crossrail project, the largest urban transport project in Europe. So in 1948, as in 2012, a huge ongoing need to rebuild and expand the UK's infrastructure. And now to 2012 and London's third Olympic Games, and also to this government's priority and focus on delivering our infrastructure plans. And that is why infrastructure is a key focus of the conference this morning. That is why we published the UK's first ever national infrastructure plan with over 250 billion pounds of identified projects across energy, transport, communications, and the environment to be delivered up to 2015 and beyond. We've established a new cabinet committee solely focused on delivering this plan. The Prime Minister himself has requested regular updates from me on some of the key projects, and that, I think, shows the government's determination to deliver on our plans for the nation's infrastructure. Last week, we announced that we would make available up to £40 billion of government guarantees to underpin the financing of major infrastructure projects using the strength of the government's own balance sheet to help the private sector finance UK projects in these very difficult financing markets. And as the Prime Minister mentioned, we have cut our 50-year-old planning rules from over a thousand pages to just 50 pages, and the government has set a planning guarantee to ensure that no planning application takes longer than one year. So that is 2012 a government committed from the top to ensuring the UK remains one of the best places in the world to invest in infrastructure, a government which will see our infrastructure plans delivered. So lastly, what of 2052? Well, my dream is that the Olympic Games will be back in the UK in 2052. But about the continuing rollout of UK infrastructure, we can be certain, we don't need to dream. So what is our, our vision for UK infrastructure in 2052? A hub airport that is still one of the best in the world. A Y-shaped high-speed rail network that will link London and the North. A balanced energy generation mix with renewables and carbon capture and storage a fleet of nuclear-powered stations coming up to the middle of their working lives, a cleaner River Thames in the heart of London through completion of the Thames Tideway Tunnel, almost every car and van an ultra-low emission vehicle, and Europe's finest super-fast broadband network. So that is the vision, and these are the projects that I'm confident that will be largely funded built and operated by investors and corporations in this room. As we roll out our plans over the next decade and more, benefiting both the UK and those of you who choose to invest in it. Thank you. Thanks.